Hello there people, this is Christian, welcome back to my computer and fusion and this rectangular pattern we have in front of us, I just want to change my selection filter so we avoid the flashing on the screen uh, one correct, one wrong, of course uh, this is from a Reddit question I think some like a month ago uh, about putting something like a slot pattern within a boundary in this case we have a rectangle and we have like a boundary distance to all sides can be done Bit different ways and of course the problem is that the thing we are patterning is also uh, angled in the same direction as the pattern so we can't pattern like we did in this case i can't use the side edges like that because the pattern would go outside the boundary because the pattern is the pattern extent is based on like this point to this point but this point here is driven by where this point is and that point so you get like this interesting geometry and of course we can use math in fusion but i'm born lazy so i'd like to use uh, geometry within sketches and we're also going to talk about a small problem with tangent constraints but let's just jump over to an empty file that's been saved so this can be slightly random dimensions we're going to create a sketch do it from the top whatever direction you want we're going to do a rectangle just to avoid too much geometry i'm just going to start from region point pull it up do it like 50 by 140 something like that ah we want a bit higher let's do a 65 so like a basic rectangle we can do this in one sketch or in two sketches now we know we're going to do so i'm going to do most of the thing in one sketch i would maybe recommend to do like a rectangle first extrude it and then do the slot that's up to you but i'm going to make it in one sketch it's just a small model normally we prefer the workflow one sketch one feature one sketch one feature and so forth but i'm going to create the slot in here center to center slot so i'm going to sketch one of the slots going to be over here we're going to do some decisions we're going to put d for dimension of a keyboard and do this let's make it seven i'm going to make a angle dimension i might want to change the length that is 30 degrees so now we have the first slot and the question is now how do i know where the slots end and stuff like that so i'm going to make one more slot create slot centered center slot in this case i'm going to turn in construction this is just to get me a placeholder to look at things so this is the same slot so we're going to do some things i'm going to make equal between the radius and we're going to make them parallel i don't care about the length so far because i haven't started working with the how far from the edge i want it so these can still move around they are now parallel and they are same size so let's say I want these to be a certain offset from the edge. One possible workflow is make an offset and then use a bunch of tangent constraints. But let's talk about tangent constraints. Here we have two circles and a line in the middle. These two circles, one normal circle and one construction circle, they are both what we call it, legit solutions to tangent to this line. So Fusion sees these two solutions as not the same, but in legit terms of being tangent to this line, like these are the same. Both these solutions can be correct. And that sometimes screws up when you change dimension because circles or arcs jumps to the wrong side of a line. So we can do this offset slightly different. We have a radius here. Oops, sorry. I'm going to move a dimension slightly now so you can see it. We have a radius here and so we want an offset from all sides that is the radius and then plus something so let's do that like an offset so what we're going to do we're going to create a inside offset rectangle here and the corner of those is going to be the center point of this and the center point of this you will see slowly slightly in a short time here and uh, let's see uh, there's a small thing about offset i don't know why you, sometimes you can't click dimension and most time you can't click dimensions while in the offset command to add so i'm going to have a look at this you can pause the mouse cursor over you will see it's called d3 or you can click on the dimension and the name pops up down to the right so it's called d3 o on the keyboard for offset select a rectangle uh, it's already uh, selected construction because i've already done this smaller ones because i want a construction rectangle what is the offset position so that needs to be the radius so you can see i can't click this dimension so i need to type it in that's why i picked up the name that's the d3 
So that is, uh, it's going wrong direction, I know, we're going to fix that only a short while. So now we have offset with the radius, so if you just do this, this circle is going to be tangent to the edges out here of our large angle. So we're going to add some spacing, let's do 5 millimeters, And all of this is now the wrong direction, so I'm going to add some parentheses. Or we can simply do flip in this case, sorry. I forget at, uh, that this has that flip, adds the minus and the parentheses, or you can do it by hand. I always forget about these small flip buttons. So, we have now done our offsets. We're going to click OK. Now, keep on adding constraints. So, we know this corner up here. We're going to do a coincident between the center of the slot and here. And the same over here. You start to see things start to turn uh, black, fully constrained. We're going to do this. going to touch that line. And this one here. So gonna hit escape we can now just to check our sketch let's change some dimensions so you see everything is updating do a 20 we have a functioning sketch to go back 30 let's make that uh, 8 no problem you can see when I change the diameter or the radius the offset updates so we now have a functioning sketch, and if we want to change the offset here, of course, we need to edit this sketch and change this number to like 7, and we get a larger offset. Eh, let's do it like that. With a most of the things, we need one more thing. That is our pattern extension. So, what is our pattern extension? A pattern extension is from a point in our the thing we want to pattern to the same point at the end of a pattern of course the end of a pattern is not over here the end of a pattern is here so in this case we can use driven dimension d for dimension select the center point and the same point in the last here that's this one here well, up here and fuse is going to tell her yes i want a driven dimension the bit boring thing is that i can't, can't name it and i can't make it a favorite but two things i want to do for using this within uh, or look correctly outside of the sketch. We can use this dimension within the sketch, but I'm going to use it in a rectangular pattern outside of the sketch because we do not want to do patterns within a sketch. We have to avoid pattern with the sketch if it's correct naming. So I just created this dimension, so I'm going to go up to change parameters here. Uh, I haven't opened up it yet, so I'm going to open up my design, sketch one. If it was it made it directly now, I have my. Uh, Dimension here, driven, parenthesis route, so that's a driven, slightly grayed out. So step one, make it a favorite. And for easier find pattern, I'm gonna name it. It makes it easier. So now we have a driven dimension we can use outside of the sketch. Hit OK. So do we need any more? No. We have a let's open our check. We have a fully defined sketch. We're gonna finish sketch. So we can do the extrude and then pattern of faces. I'm going to hit E and extrude the full body first. Let's do it at 5 millimeters. Do E once again. Turn around my model so I can find this profile. And uh, we can simply do distance all like that. We can hit OK. So we have done like our cut here or a slot cut with its own feature. Makes it easier to select. I could do a pattern of faces, yes, but I need to select four faces and click on things. It's easier to just select one feature. S on the keyboard, let's find rectangular pattern. I have moved it up here. If you type S and then start typing rect, you can find rectangular pattern like that. I've only done this previous, it's only set to features. It's normally set to bodies, but it's going to be features. Select our extrude feature. You can see in the model how it highlights. So it could be that one. What axis? I can use the sketch line or an edge or anything that goes in correct direction. I'm going to use the sketch line here. And now the distance. We created our little uh, distribution is extent, so that's correct. So we're going to set these to our little here. You can see sketch one. It tells us this is from sketch one. It's a linear dimension. So I'm going to select that one. And you can see it now aligns to our little sketch or construction geometry within our sketch. And we can add some more. So this makes it quite easy to change the number because the pattern extent is the same the whole time. You maybe want to make them smaller and change things. So I'm going to do like that. Okay. And have a look at our model. We have made this. Let's edit things. I'm going to jump in. So let's say it's 160 instead. It works. Our little radio dimension of the slots is this one here. That's supposed to be 
5 is a bit smaller. Maybe we want more slots. Let's edit our rectangular pattern. We want 7. So, in this way, we have made, of course, we can change the angle to uh, 15. Going to make them more or less angle. So, this is how we can use driven dimension outside of a sketch. It takes a bit of clicking. I hope the user interface is going to be updated slightly and make it a bit easier, like clicking on dimension and make it easier to name driven dimension when we make them within a sketch, but that's for the future. So I hope this can help you with some designs. With that said, take care, see you around, and goodbye.